Hello YouTube! My name's Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, another episode of Dear Nero, which is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions, and I do best to go ahead and answer them. This week we've got a good number of questions, but it's actually a smaller number than usual. The reason for that is a lot of these questions are a little bit longer that may require a bit longer of an explanation. Plus, this is my third video I'm making today. I'm getting tired here. My voice is starting to go a little bit. So hopefully we can power through this, and hopefully you guys will enjoy this week's episode of Dear Nero. It's a fun series every week I like making them first question comes in from a guy from Alex in Maryland he's gonna write dear Nero how come we haven't seen a gameplay from the map Atlas Gorge you to not enjoy the map let me know longtime subscriber Alex from Maryland so here that's an interesting one so I made videos talking about Atlas Gorge you guys will know of course Atlas Gorge was one of the pre-order bonus maps for advanced warfare and basically it is the map pipeline from Call of Duty 4 but it was remade into Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and it's got like this Atlas Corporation feel to it I think it's next to a dam or something along those lines the reason you haven't seen any gameplay from Atlas Gorge is because I'm yet to play it I do have the season pass. I do have the map download. I am able to play the map. But as you guys know, I don't enjoy Call of Duty when I'm not playing it with friends or with a group, you know? I just, I, I just don't enjoy it as much. Like, I feel as though the days of me playing Call of Duty solo are kind of behind me. I just don't enjoy them nearly as much. Like, just going in there solo and getting frustrated at your teammates and losing matches and stuff. I like playing with my friends, like chatting with them and stuff. And not all of my friends have the season pass. You know, even if, like, five of us have it, there's always at least one person that does not have the season pass or have Atlas Gorge. And so because of that I've never actually even played on. I walked around in a private match just to see what it was like. I'm like, wow, this is really pretty. And I could see the stuff. I'd walk around the area. I'm like, I know exactly where this is from Pipeline. It was kind of cool. It was a really well done reimagination of a map. But of course, I don't know how it plays or anything like that. Hopefully, one of these days, I'll actually be able to play on the map a little bit and I'll record it and I'll post it up. But yeah, Atlas Gorge, I, haven't, I just haven't played it. I haven't played it at all yet because not all my friends have the map. And I always play with my friends when I play Call of Duty. Next question he writes, Dear Nero, have you ever had a game distract you from playing a different game, Geo from New Jersey? So I think this is like especially relevant if you're a YouTuber, and it almost comes off weird to say, but I think I can explain it pretty well. Call of Duty is more or less my job, and I hate saying it that way because it's like, oh, well, you don't really enjoy the game, you only play it because that's your job. No, I enjoy Call of Duty. I always have, and I think I always will. There's something about the game that never seems to get old for me. I enjoy Call of Duty, and I make Call of Duty videos here on my YouTube channel, but I like a lot of other games, and so anytime I get like invested in another game that takes away from playing Call of Duty because when you're a Call of Duty YouTuber like me you have to play a ton of it like you are always I do keep up to date with the news I'm always playing the game I'm always trying to learn new stuff and make videos of it and stuff so you have to play a ton of Call of Duty and that really kind of takes away a lot of my free time uh, from playing other games but there's a lot of other games out there that I really like and over the years uh, there's been a bunch of game series that I've really kind of been getting into and I used to start playing it and I start binging it and as a result it's like well crap man I want to play this game but I also I need to make sure I'm playing Call of Duty you know I need to make sure I'm doing that as well because that's my youtube channel that's why i do here it's call of duty you know and those games are like borderlands right borderlands 2 good god that thing uh, i think i played the majority of my borderlands 2 time i think during uh, black ops 2 when that game was out and i played so much borderlands 2 but at the same time like i played a ton of black ops 2 as well and it's like oh man borderlands is so much fun and of course when the other scrolls online came out that game was ridiculously fun it's basically skyrim but it's an mmo it was great i loved it it was a lot of fun playing that uh civilization 5 i went on a civ 5 kick randomly it, it, i, I just randomly start playing it that's a game where you can sit down and start playing then you'll find yourself like seven hours later still in the same game just thinking to yourself one more turn one more turn you know it's really kind of like that of course like going to the back and playing your call of duties that's definitely a big thing uh, i started playing wow that's a lot of fun i started playing hearthstone that's a ton of fun as well just to, there's a bunch of games i play that really kind of take away from uh from wanting to play call of duty all the time but at the same time i need to make sure i'm putting in that play time in call of duty i need to make sure i'm doing that because that's why i do here i do i do i play call of duty on my youtube channel that's what i do so uh, there's I guess there's plenty of games, plenty of examples of games that distract me from playing Call of Duty, but just by the very nature of being a Call of Duty YouTuber, you have to play a ton of it. You have to play a ton of Call of Duty, way more than like your average casual fan would. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, with the releases of Borderlands, a pre-sequel, Tales from the Borderlands, and the announcement of the Handsome Collection, which you guys will know is going to be Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel both put together on Next Gen, do you think the Borderlands series will become oversaturated and that Gearbox is just milking the franchise? I love the Borderlands series, especially your Let's Plays on them, and I think that they are putting out way too many games and that the people will get bored of the franchise. Daniel from Texas. 
So Daniel, that's an interesting one, but I don't necessarily agree with it. Here's a few reasons why. So you say you're wor you're worried. Now I see I see this a lot, especially talking about Borderlands, is that uh, they may be oversaturating it. Of course, they had Borderlands 2 super successful. Then they put out the pre sequel. Not too long after that, they put out Tales from the Borderlands, which is made by Telltale. It's kind of similar to like the Telltale Walking Dead games or the Game of Thrones games or any of the Telltale games, right? It's basically a point and click adventure, that kind of idea. And so they put out the Tales from Borderlands, and now they've announced the Handsome Collection, which basically they're going to be taking Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, the two most recent Borderlands games, and basically porting them over to the next gen, updating the graphics, stuff like that, uh, bundling them and all the DLC together into one disc or one group package for $60, which is a great price, by the way. They're going to be doing that. I don't feel as though they're oversaturating it, though. I really don't. Cause you think Borderlands 2, that was out for two years, I believe. I, I believe Borderlands 2 was out for two years. And then they released Borderlands, a pre-sequel this year. All right, a New game, new Borderlands game to play. It wasn't really my cup of tea, especially the end game, but it was a brand new game. And then they released Tales of the Borderlands. I feel so Tales from the Borderlands is just really more of a Telltale game. I don't even really consider it to be part of the Borderlands series, part of the Borderlands franchise. And when you look at the Handsome Collection, I don't even consider those to be new games at all because all they're really doing is taking Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, which were only on uh, prior gen, you know, 360 and the PlayStation 3, and making them so they actually work and you can transfer your save data and all that stuff over onto the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. I think that's a great thing. I don't feel as though they're honestly oversaturating it whatsoever. I really don't I really don't feel that way. I feel as though they're putting out a good amount of games. They're keeping up with the games. You think of Call of Duty, right? In fact, there's a brand new game every year. Then you look at Borderlands 2, which was out for two years, and the pre-sequel, which was only out for one. For, for the past three years in Borderlands, we've only gotten two games. Whereas Call of Duty, we've gotten three games. You, know, you think about that. So it's like, I really don't feel as though they're really oversaturating the game thing. They're not really making a brand new full-on Borderlands game every year. I don't really consider Tales from the Borderlands a full-on Borderlands game. That's a point-and-click adventure that's just fun to play through and just to experience a little bit of the story. It's nothing like the other Borderlands games. You don't, you know, you're not looting guns. You're not shooting up people. It's just a point and click kind of like a story time game that kind of idea so i don't feel as though they're really oversaturating it i'm super excited for borderlands 3 assuming that will ever go ahead and make that i'm really hoping that ends up coming out because so far the pre-sequel man the pre-sequel is fun playing through it. and of course they did the let's play on yours let's play is also a fun uh, game to play through but the end game the raid boss is oh so bad i'm not gonna rant about the raid boss anymore but damn they really messed up the end game in that game they really really did next question he writes Dear Nero, I've been playing a ton of Destiny lately, and I've had a ton of fun. It made me totally forget Call of Duty Advanced Warfare exists, and in my personal opinion, I seem to be liking Destiny a bit more than Borderlands. I was just wondering why won't you just give Destiny at least a shot, Nero? I'm asking because I think you would probably enjoy it. Clay from Massachusetts. So Clay, I've talked about this a couple times. I think I've answered it a couple times as well, and I guess I'll try and do it quickly here because I do get this question honestly quite a bit. So the reason I didn't play Destiny is because more or less it's a console FPS MMO game. That's really what it is. It's basically an MMO. They keep they keep on saying no, it's not an MMO. It's an online persistent, but basically it's got MMO elements. But it looks like an MMO. It smells like an MMO. It feels like an MMO. Chances are it's probably an MMO, which is a massively multiplayer online game. If you guys don't know, so basically it's that. And the thing about it is, is I already play two other MMO games, you know, and MMOs, you guys will know, they, it's not like Call of Duty, Call of Duty, you can hop on, right, you hop on, play a few matches, rank up a bit, maybe unlock a gun, get a supply drop, have some fun, and then hop off, you know, it's a really kind of a pick up and play kind of game, Call of Duty. MMO games consume your entire existence because there's so much to do all of the time, and you're in this giant open world, and you're in there with millions of other players, and it's a really kind of cool experience that you really can't get outside of the MMO genre, it's really cool. Elder Scrolls Online, World of Warcraft, two MMO games I'm already playing and I already enjoy both of them. They're both already pretty good, right? And so when Destiny came out, it's like, I don't need a third MMO. They already consume a ton of time. You go back to a question I answered earlier on this. It's like, have you ever had games that distract you from playing other games? Definitely MMOs. Those things fucking consume you. There's so much to do. I, I don't like to swear too much. I apologize for swearing, but they really do. They, they consume you. That's what MMO games do. And the idea of having a new one is nuts to me. And honestly, though, I'm not trying to like take away from Destiny. I'm not trying to poke fun or anything like that, but I feel so one of the reasons, among I guess among many reasons, that Destiny is such a popular game and so many people are enjoying Destiny, is console players have never experienced anything like an MMO before because MMOs are always go they always come out on the PC, right? There's been there's only been like a handful of console MMO games that have ever actually come out. So the fact it was made by Bungie, and the fact that it's an MMO game, and for the first time, players on the console are experiencing what an MMO can feel like, and how it really can consume you, and how there's so much to do, and how you just want to spend every waking minute playing that game. 
that's the reason why I feel as though Destiny is super popular, right? I already have two other MMO games. I don't need a third. I'm sure Destiny is great. I'm sure if I were to try it, I'd get sucked into it, but I don't need that. I have already have a bunch of games I'm playing right now. The last thing I need is another game, especially one that's going to suck you in as much as an MMO game does. That's why I personally don't start, I didn't start playing Destiny. I don't really plan on starting playing Destiny anytime in the near future. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, what is the best and worst decision that you've ever made, and do you still feel the same about having a family or not? Love your videos. Keep it up. Robert from Indiana. P.S. Go Browns. That's right. Go Browns. I, I gotta say, man, I'm just gonna point this in here before I answer the question. I actually didn't pay too much attention to football this year. The thing about the Browns, and the fact I've been a Browns fan for so long, is that they are just they are just a factory of sadness. They are just a just disappointment every single year. The Browns haven't made it to the playoffs in... Well, when was the last time they made the playoffs? I can't even remember. I, I feel like it was 1994. <laughs> And they've had two winning seasons since, like, they came back into the league, I believe, back in 92. Every single year, the Browns just do bad, and it's awful, it's so frustrating, and it's like, this year, like, I don't know, I just, like, kind of, like, lost interest in watching the NFL this year. I'm sure it would come back by the time next year comes out, but it's like, I just lost all interest, man. I'm, just, I'm so tired of watching the Browns lose and lose and lose and lose and lose. I'm not one of those people that can just jump teams or anything like that. It's like, that's my team, you know, so because I didn't even pay too much attention to football this year. But back to the question, what was the best and worst decision I've ever made? I honestly feel as though the best decision I've made in my young, young life, I'm only 23, is starting my YouTube channel. That, that may sound cliche, it may seem like the predictable answer, but it really is. All the awesomeness that has come from having a YouTube channel and growing it and just everything that's, it entails with doing YouTube is great. It's, it's some of the best experiences of my life. In terms of a decision, I think I don't think I could have made a better decision than starting my YouTube channel and really kind of pushing towards it and uh, continuing to make videos and trying to do my best here on YouTube. That's I think it's the best decision I've made uh, so far in my young life. Of course, I'm only 23. I'm sure some other ones that are going to end up happening. Worst decision I've ever made. I think definitely the worst decision I've made in my life was probably when I started smoking. Um, I started smoking cigarettes maybe... I, I feel like I feel as I was probably 15 or 16 or so, somewhere in that age frame when I started smoking. It was the cool thing to do. It's what all my friends did, and you guys know I started smoking. I ended up smoking for a while and ended up quitting uh, smoking about two years ago, but quitting smoking is not easy. It is not easy whatsoever, and it, it's awful. Like the, the entire idea of like of, of nicotine it's it's evil it's freaking evil like some people say like uh, you have like an addiction to like video games you know i'm addicted to playing video games i'm addicted to uh watching netflix i'm addicted to watching tv uh, you can be people claim to be addicted to a lot of things like that but the thing about being addicted to nicotine is it's an actual physical addiction it's not like you feel weird like oh i'd much rather be you know playing video games right now it's not like that it's like a psychological addiction the thing about nicotine the thing about starting to smoke or chewing tobacco or pipe tobacco or anything any kind of tobacco at all with nicotine in it is it's actually a physical addiction if you don't have nicotine once you're hooked on it if you don't have nicotine you physically get ill you get cranky you start feeling sick to your stomach you start shaking it's a physical addiction that really messes with you and that's why i say every time i like bring up and people like to ask if i, if I still uh, if i'm still like on the train i still haven't smoked after quitting i still haven't and i still want to say to you guys every single time do not smoke do not start do not start using any kind of nicotine it is freaking awful you hear all the time growing up how awful it can be it's terrible especially the physical thing and once you start you can't stop and it's really kind of hard and then like Ow, you think of like what you're doing to your body, whatever kind of tobacco you're using. You're rotting out your teeth with chewing tobacco. You're, you're, you're freaking blackening your lungs with smoking. It's awful. You need to quit. You need to quit if you already are. If you haven't started, never start. I'm glad I was able to quit when I did. And I want you guys all to quit too. If any of you guys out there are using any kind of tobacco product, definitely try to quit that. It's awful bad stuff. I definitely think that's the worst decision I made in my life was starting. I'm glad I quit, but still, it's, it was an awful decision. And what do I, and the third part of the question is kind of a little trifecta here is uh, do I still feel the same? about having a family or not and I think I still agree with what I said uh, before I still feel as though I'm, I, I'm the fatherly type I don't feel as though I, I would want to have a family I don't think I'd want the responsibility of having a family I really kind of like uh, it might sound cliche but I kind of like the idea of just doing me just do uh, I, I do my YouTube thing I focus on that my career if you will I focus on that I just enjoy my life and I don't feel as though you know having a wife and kids I feel as though they'll honestly kind of take away from that a little bit maybe I wouldn't enjoy myself as much at least at this point in my life so at this point in my life still no I really still don't feel as though I would like to have a family Next question, and this one's kind of a long one, so we're going to hop into this here. He's going to write, Dear Nero, I'm doing an assignment which will be graded for a course in college, and part of it is to understand people's thoughts and opinions on market trends in the gaming industry at the moment, the type of genre, the characters, and what people want in a game at the moment. If you could answer these couple questions, I'd be over the moon. Longer short answers are welcome, completely up to you. And here are the questions. 
What do you believe to be trending in the gaming industry at the moment? What type of game, what characters, what time frame, what setting of the game? Why do you believe this? Do you agree with other people in wanting these genres and themes in your game? If not, what do you want? Thanks again. If you complete this, this is purposely to help me with my assignment and my coursework. And I give full credit, full credit will be given to you. Uh, thanks for making videos and being part of YouTube, Limeless HD. So that was kind of a long one. So basically our guy here, he's writing, a, writing an assignment, I suppose, for college about the idea of a market trend within the gaming industry and he wants to know my opinions on a lot of different things within that so first and foremost what types of games what types of games do i believe to be are trending in the gaming industry at the moment so i think the big one of course first person shooters are a big thing they always have been i think i feel as though they're kind of a trend that's going to continue you look at your call of duties and your battlefields and uh you look at just at your counter strikes and just I, I feel as though first person shooters or just shooter games in general are definitely games that are going to be uh, trending for quite a long time here within the gaming industry that's not just talking about youtube that's just within the game Gaming industry as a whole like if you were to talk just to random people on the street have they heard of DayZ? you know but they probably haven't maybe but if you hear them you talk to any person on the street and you say have you heard of call of duty i bet you they have and chances are they already play it another genre of game i feel so is super trending right now it's definitely a very popular game one of the biggest games in the world in fact is a moba style game now it's kind of hard to define what a moba style game is but some examples of that would be dota uh, league of legends smite heroes of the storm things like that games like that are definitely trending i think league of legends actually is the biggest game right now in terms of esports is by far the biggest game within the gaming industry right now that's definitely a popular genre it's on the rise while it may not be like super popular on YouTube per se, it's definitely a very, very popular game that a ton of people are playing. League of Legends is one of those games, uh, kind of like an MMO in a way, where basically it's going to consume you. And it, to me, there's a too big of a skill gap. I don't want to take, like, people have been playing that game for so long now, and for me to try and get into it, I would just get wrecked nonstop. And it's like, nah, I don't feel as though I want to get into that. But uh, they're definitely popular games. MOBA style games are definitely very popular. Another very popular genre of game that I feel as a lot of people are really into is the idea of an open world survival game. You look at what happened with DayZ, all right? DayZ super super popular everybody's playing it then the standalone came out even though the game is an alpha and it is still an alpha and i think it costs like 40 dollars now people are still paying money hand over fist to be able to play that game they are loving the hell out of it they are enjoying it that's what they're doing you look at the new game what's it called h1z1 i think that's a brand new one that just came out the same idea open world survival game basically everybody's already they're up in arms about it everyone's freaking out over this game everybody's already starting to play this game everyone is super stoked about playing that game i feel as though the three uh main genres that are really popular right now would be first person shooter moba and open world survival of course there's a bunch of other genres within the gaming scene you look at the mmo games you look at rpg games you look at action adventure games you look at things like that while they could still be popular if i had to say the most popular genres of games i would say would be first person shooters moba games as well as open world survival what type of time frame? I think it's definitely a trend that we're seeing with a lot of the games that are coming out right now. Right now, at this point in time, the idea of a futuristic or like a mod like a postmodern to like a futuristic style game is by far the most popular uh, time frame to have within your games. You look at how many games come out right now that are just all set futuristic or semi-futuristic or just full-on futuristic. You look at Destiny, you look at uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, you look at uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, you look at Borderlands, you look at Civilization Beyond Earth, you look at everything, man. A lot of games now are coming out, they have a space theme to them they have uh just this futuristic kind of feel to it it's definitely a popular thing right now and all these games really seem to be having this me personally i'm not a big fan of it the reason i'm not a big fan of it is because i like actual stuff that happens especially in call of duty stuff i'd rather uh, go back to vietnam the cold war uh world at war you know world war ii stuff like that i would like i like that kind of stuff i like real history rather than make believe history that uh, people are making just in terms of having like an open-ended story uh, for me i don't feel as though a futuristic time frame is necessarily for me but i guess i can see why people would like that. Uh, me personally, I mean, you look at me in, in uh, Advanced Warfare, you see me run around with the lasers and stuff and just embracing that because it's kind of fun. It is fun to use this kind of stuff. It's definitely different. But at the same time, I really like actual history. I really like World War II. I like your M16s and stuff like that. So it feels like right now a lot of games are going along the lines of we need to have this futuristic kind of feel to it. And I think the reason I believe that is just because you just look at the games. Look at games that are out right now. Tons of them are futuristic. Just tons of them in general. Hopefully that answers your question. I know you wanted to know like, why I believe to be trending within the game the industry at the moment and i definitely feel so i answered that pretty well as well as the time frame of these games and the type of games these things have uh the setting i really didn't cover too much on setting or game characters but setting and game characters uh i feel so setting can be kind of tied into the time frame and characters changes upon games i don't feel so there may necessarily be a specific trope of character that is super popular right now yeah, like you think of different tropes like you think of like the damsel in distress that kind of idea you know, or like the the hardened tough guy or the grizzled old veteran or like the the, the geeky nerd that saves the day somehow or anything i don't 
feel as though there is a specific kind of character that really stands out above the rest in terms of being like a super popular kind of character that every game seems to try to have in there at once. So hopefully that answers your question, Mr. Limeless. Hopefully that does answer your question. And that one, I told you that'd be a longer one. That was definitely a lot longer of a question. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, I've been recently using the MP11 because you said you enjoyed using it. I really enjoy using it, but I'm always outclassed by the ASM1. My question is, do you think the MP11 should be buffed or the ASM1 needs to be nerfed? Also, what is your opinion on the ability to get panic punched? Do you think it should be removed or changed? Thanks for your time, Cruz from Canada. So, Mr. Cruz, MP11, great gun. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving the MP11 a chance to be here at the MP11 Appreciation Society. Definitely love the fact that other people are trying to use the MP11 because it's definitely a fun gun to use. I love the MP11. Do I feel as though it's outclassed by the ASM1? It is. It, every submachine gun, most of the guns in the game are outclassed by the ASM1. And a big trend within Advanced Warfare right now is the fact that if you just pay attention, right, you just pay attention to your lobbies, the kill feed, man, is going to be nothing but Fall 27s or ASM1s. Those are like the two guns that everybody is using all the time and it's awful man i hate it 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 and if you're not using like the asm1 you're not using the ball 27 you're going to be outclassed because those are by far the two most powerful guns in the game that's the thing about that they're both very powerful i do feel as though the asm1 needs to be nerfed i think the ball 27 needs to be nerfed again but the problem with that is if you were to do that then perhaps another gun's going to suddenly pop up as overpowered and if i were to make suggestions right i'd make a guess right so let's say they nerf the ball 27 to the point where it's useless and nerf the asm1 to the point where it's useless the next two overused guns i can guarantee it are going to be the AK K12 and the KF5. I feel so those would be the two that they would just replace it. That's the thing about Call of Duty is Call of Duty fans always seem to just gravitate towards the best guns in the game and use only those, which is frustrating. So I don't feel so there's really much we can do about it. Of course, I'd like to nerf the guns a little bit, but you know, you can't nerf them too much. Otherwise, a bunch of other guns will just come up as the OP gun that everyone will start using those. You need to try and find a nice balance with that where all the guns are viable. That's what uh, Sunshammer is really kind of struggling with right now, but eventually, hopefully, they'll get it right and uh, all the guns in the game will become balanced to the point where when you look at the kill feed in any particular match you're playing, there's going to be a nice variety of weapons in there. I think that's what people want the most. In terms of getting panic punched, uh, <laughs> I, do, I do a little bit of panic punching, but I play on tactical. So when I, so for me, if you can picture like an Xbox controller, even a PlayStation controller, uh, a lot of people on default setup, they basically click down the right stick. That's how they melee. I play on tactical, so if I click down my right stick, that's how I go prone, that's how I crouch, and things like that. So if I want to go ahead and actually knife, I need to move my thumb all the way over to the B button on the Xbox, which I supposed to be the circle button on the PlayStation. That's how my knife is with that circle button or B button, depending on your platform. And so for me, it's not really as much of a panic as it is like I realized really quickly, you just have really good reflexes. I know I need to get over and get that, that punch off. But a lot of people, you know, they, they they see somebody, like you both turn a corner at each other and the guy just kind of freezes a little bit and he like crunches his controller. And because of that, he clicks down on a stick because of that he knifes you and it's annoying. He gets that melee kill on you. Super annoying when that happens, right? So I this is something I've suggested for years, but Call of Duty never seems to want to do it. And it bothers me if they don't want to do this. They need to have more of a Halo style approach when it comes to the melee so if you want to melee kill somebody knife them wherever you want to call it up front like you know face to face you need to go ahead and melee them twice the first one can do damage i suppose but it won't kill you unless of course you're already hurt right you need to actually get two melee hits and make it so each melee hit does 50 damage or something like that or maybe make it a little bit more so it requires only two even if they're using stim or something like that but do that make it so you have to melee them twice from the front but only once from the back so if you sneak up on somebody from behind and you melee them it'll be a one hit kill right that idea right so that's honestly all they need to do to fix melee in call of duty that's uh, overnight they will eliminate the entire idea of panic knifing or panic punching or anything you want to call it right overnight they would be able to fix that it would be so simple so 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 simple i really wish uh, one of these call of duty developers would take a chance and just change it around because think about it though melee is one of the core fundamental aspects of call of duty it's always been the same you press the button you knife it's a one hit kill all the time right it's how it works it's how it's always worked it's probably probably always will work but uh, if they want to take a risk, take a little bit of a chance. And Treyarch may do this because they're known for taking some really good chances that usually end up paying off. I hope that the next Treyarch game, they will make it so melee, if you want to knife somebody, you have to knife them twice from the front and uh, only once from behind. Me personally, I would like that. You know, sometimes knifing, it's nice. Like if you're like me, you're playing a tactical, you actually have to think the knife, but it would just get rid of panic knifing. I think the ends would definitely justify the means in that regard. Next question, he writes... 
dear Nero. Is the ending in your videos where the TV kind of turns off from the ending of the World at War intro and this person did not leave his or her name? Yes, it is. So basically, it's kind of a little fun fact. Every single one of my videos you've ever seen has a tiny little bit of World at War gameplay in it, technically. Because you know at the end of the video, I say have a wonderful day. Then it's like that TV turning off kind of thing. Then it pops to my outro. Yeah, that thing, that little TV ending, that's from the end of the intro, like the opening introduction cinematic to Call of Duty World at War. So yeah, that's actually a fun fact. And you have a good eye. Definitely a good eye for noticing that. Not too many people actually ended up noticing that. Next and final question, he's going to write, Dear Nero, since there aren't going to be any remakes in the Havoc DLC, do you think it would be a good idea if, in the fourth and final map pack, all the maps are remakes and comes with a classic weapon like the ACR from Modern Warfare 2 or the Tommy Gun from World of War, thanks to the Pig Bear Man from Northfield? So that would be an interesting idea. I think it's something a lot of people are talking about is the fact that there is no remake map. For the first time in Call of Duty, we've gotten a DLC pack that does not actually include a remake map. Well, I guess the first time since Modern Warfare 2 came out, because Call of Duty 4, when they first introduced DLC, they didn't have any remake maps in World of War. I don't believe they had any remake maps, but I know they did that uh, starting out in Modern Warfare 2. It's interesting that they want to do that. I think a lot of people kind of look forward to that. We look forward to three brand new maps, a brand new map for wherever the extra game mode is, be it like uh, Extinction or be it like a uh, Zombies or something like that. We look forward to that as well. And we also can look forward to a, a remake map. The fourth map that we'll be getting in the multiplayer will be a remake map from a classic Call of Duty map. You think of some of the great ones over time, like uh, Shipment, which they completely ruined wind in Call of Duty Ghosts with their remake. Oh god, it was so bad. But uh, you look at other stuff like when they, when they remade Firing Range and they made that studio or they remade Summit and they made that Uplink or you think they remade uh, they made, uh, the stuff from COD 4 like Crash and Overgrown and Strike and Vacant. Like, remaking these old maps and being able to play on those maps that you already know and love on the current game is a whole lot of fun. People definitely like that. I'm kind of disappointed a little bit that, that they don't have that in Advanced Warfare so far. So hopefully they'll bring it out in some of the other DLCs or like you said, the idea of the, the fourth and final DLC just being nothing but remakes would definitely be pretty awesome. And if you do the math on that, it would actually make sense because if there's three DLC maps and all three of them come with four brand new maps and then the fourth DLC pack is just four remake maps, by that point we'll have just about uh, the same amount of brand new content as well as remade content as we would from older Call of Duty games like Black Ops 2 in terms of their DLC. So that'd definitely be a pretty cool thing. The idea of bringing back guns with that DLC pack would definitely be cool. The ACR from Modern Warfare 2, that'd be a fun gun, I suppose. The ACR from Modern Warfare 2 is definitely kind of fun. OP is held in Modern Warfare 3, but it was fun during Modern Warfare 2. Definitely a cool gun. The Tommy Gun from World of War. Of course, one of my favorite guns of all time. That would be pretty nice, but the exact same time, you think of the Tommy gun from World of War is kind of like the ASM-1 here in Advanced Warfare, so I'm not sure they would bring back that gun necessarily, but bringing back some other fan favorites, you know, would bring back an MP5. MP5 is a gun that a lot of people love. The M16, you know, stuff like that. Those are guns they could definitely go with, like an AK-74U submachine gun. That would be a cool one I think a lot of people might enjoy. Bring back my Remington 870 so I have a good pump-action shotgun, please! Bring back stuff like that! You know, that would be pretty cool. I would definitely be interested to see uh, how such hammer would like to handle that kind of stuff in the future but it's definitely an interesting idea mr bear pig man from northfield and that ladies and gentlemen concludes this week's episode of dear nero i hope you guys all enjoyed it and if you did please be sure to leave a ring where you guys feel it deserves and of course if you guys would like to submit your questions for next week's episode of dear nero all you really need to do is send me a personal message here on youtube google it if you don't know how to it's very simple you all you gotta do is go to my youtube channel go to the about section go to the send message button it's right there it always works very very nice and at the very beginning of your question please write the phrase dear nero so i'm scrolling through all my messages I can easily detect which ones are for Dear Nero and which ones aren't for Dear Nero. So be sure to do that. And once again, I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.